welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing where we are in the Totally Awesome Workshop and today I'm going to be looking at my trailer bearings. Now everybody sooner or later whether you trailer or you don't trailer is going to have to look at their bearings and check things out, hubs etc, grease, whatever, for where. Now mine's been dragged about 3,000 miles and it's had quite a bit of a bash in. So it's been pulled, it's been used, the bearings have definitely been worn. I have changed them recently you know, sort of six months ago, but it depends how many miles you're doing. Anyway, there's a few tips I'm going to show you before you even start getting to this stage of looking at it. Now, if you've got your boat jacked up, which I do if I leave it for long periods of time, I don't leave them standing on the on the actual tyres, I, I jack them up and I put them on axle stands, which are dead cheap to buy. Get yourself a pair of axle stands, put them on, bump them up, drop them underneath and lower the trailer on top of it. Just takes that strain off the wheels. However, Another way of doing it is if you do have to leave it on your wheels, why not just jack it up, rotate the tyre if you're leaving it standing for a long time, and then it's not wearing on the same, you've got the pressure point on the same tyre all the time. Another point, a lot of people put their, in fact I used to put my outboard in the up position for a long time to people said with four strokes it's not good because the oil might, you know, sort of solidify a bit in one spot, and they put them with a vertical position on a block of wood. So if you're going to jack the actual axle of the trailer up, in order to get the wheel off, in order to get to the bearings, you might just put a bit of a strain if the boat tips backwards onto the leg, the bottom of the leg of your outboard. So make sure you just trim that outboard up just a sec, just a few inches, that's all, a little bit, you know, just so that you've got a bit of play there. You can always drop it back down on the wood when you're finished. And then the other thing you want to do is the opposite side to where you are obviously taking the wheel off, just make sure you just drop a chock underneath that. Um, you know, just in case you get any movement backwards. So you're going to be safe, better be safe than sorry. Okay, let's get cracking, let's get that wheel off. But, here's the tip, when you have a trailer up on jacks, just lower it down a bit so that the tyre's got some grip and just crack the nuts, just a quarter turn, just so you've ensured you've cracked the nuts to loosen them with the tyre on the ground. Then jack it up, drop it on the axle stands and you can take all the whole wheel off and you should have no problems at all, get the wheel off and you can see where we're going. All right, I'm now in the position with the wheel loose just to spin off the last of those nuts. And then we can take a look at not only the wheel, but the bearings and anything else. All right, once you get that last nut off, do yourself a favor because they'll have grease on them. Put them somewhere safe and you don't get grit and dirt in them. You want them where you can find them. Ease the wheel off. Gives you a chance to check the tread. This one looks okay, it's fairly new, but I do trail quite a bit. And also it gets you to look for the inside. So we'll have a clean round there, little specks of rust there, can touch it out with hammerite, rub it down and hammerite it out. And the other side wants a bit of a grease clean off. But it, and, now, and now I'm in a position to see what's going on in here. It might look a bit peculiar, but I've actually got some electrical stretch tape here because I've got the little hub cap here. Because I put a lot of grease in there, normally comes out of that wormhole. I'll probably put too much grease in there, panicking, because I do so much trailing. So I have to tape this round. I've had these pop off, and it splatters everywhere, and I'm just concerned that, you know, if one of these comes off on a long run, which I had coming back from Cornwall, that it might actually empty out totally. You can see the bits of corrosion around there anyway, and it gets you a good chance to have a look at everything. So I'm going to peel this off, and then take a look at the inside. So there you go, we just cut that off. As you can see, it just holds it on. Let's get the blade in there. Peel off that, loosen that. There he is, he's coming off. Now, I really do pack it in there. But underneath here's a castle nut and a split pin and we need to take that off to get the hub out to look at the bearings and clean it all out. So I'm gonna put some new grease in this one. Now here's another totally awesome tip. You've got all this gunk and grease to get out there. So get yourself an old milk container. Just run it around plastic like this, it's easy to cut. And you can put that grease in there and I can't normally do this by hand, but I'm going to use uh, the Weiss Best washing up gloves for this. Should be well pleased. Get yourself some some gloves and just get the, all of that gunk out there and put it. You can wipe it in there, you see, because it's got a nice sharp edge. And you can gradually clear out all that old grease. Now, just as a tip, if this goes, I think they call it emulsified. It's when you've been on a long trail and you and you put new grease in there, the hub gets hot, then 
as you immerse it, the trailer in the water, the hub is so hot and the salt water is so cold, the seawater, it sucks it in there. It gets seawater sucked into there. So it's like a sort of creates a sort of vacuum that sucks stuff in. So you do need to check it. And if you're launching after a long run, just, you know, let those hubs cool down a bit before you drop it in the water. And that's tough to do, I could tell you, because we all want to go fishing. Okay, pair along those pliers. I've located the split pin here. There he is. Open the split pin round. And squeeze it together. And you should see it there. See it pop out? Now there's a little ring here, for those who don't know. There's a little ring in the end. You can get the nose of the pliers there and, and pull it right out. You can, you can save these if you want to clean them up and save them if they're stainless and they're not showing signs of wear, which this one's not, you can just straighten them. But they can be an absolute pain to get back in there again. So I'm going to put that across there where I know all the nuts are. Now this, at the end here, is the castle nut. Now this, you want it to spin, you always want it to turn. So this is only just over finger tight. I don't even need the pliers to undo this, just, just to get a break on it like this, look there. So we spin this off. Take the castle nut off, got my hand underneath, I don't want to drop anything. And again, if you've got these plastic containers, look, you, can, you can just drop them straight in the container, you know where everything is. Then I'm going to slide the hub off. You can see the spline or the shaft there, you can check any bits of rust. I've already put some hammerite around here previously, but even there, look, you can see it on the nut starting to come through there. That wants a clean and a little dab over. So. That's, that's feeling very, very smooth, no grooves or pitting. I think on the inside here is probably a bit of heat showing there, so it's just while I'm checking it. Let's get this in a workshop and you can have a better look at it. Okay, we're in the workshop now. I've got the other one to clean up, so what I'm going to do is just show you the spare because it's much easier. Now, I once had a boat nearly come off a trailer when somebody didn't do all these nuts up uh, tight and it snapped and I had to get different studs. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to show you with this, I'm just going to point it out. Should you get these buckled if a wheel comes off, okay, that hits the ground and it gets buckled, you don't have to buy the whole hub. Providing you've got spares, you can, just not with this hammer, you can tap, tap those out and they're on a, like a spline in there, location spline in there, so you can buy new studs. You don't have to buy the whole thing. It's just a point I thought I'd make there that you can actually restud these if these get gaunched up if you lose a wheel something disastrous happens so this is my spare now there you can see is the grease nipple there so that's where you're going to put the grease in and this is the outside this is the studs that take the wheel on the inside is this rubber seal now you might get wear around there so what you need to do is when you've done your wash down is to just or even before you do your wash down is the best time really is to get after a long run go underneath have a look under there and see if there's all splatters of grease coming out from that side now it could be that you're overfilling it and there's a little lip in the seal seal here and you know obviously the excess is coming out but it could be a sign of wear bearing wear just there so you have two two sets of ball races or bearings i think we call them there they all they all rotate like little cylinders and they all rotate around each other and that all reduces friction and the same with these exactly the same so the ones on the inside of the trailer tuck in there with the studs and the seal slide that over the shaft and your other one drops in here then your washer then you're looking like your spacer and your castle nut and the split pin to hold it on okay so that gives you a good idea you're looking for any signs of wear this is a good one this one's okay I've used this before, um, you can buy new ones quite cheap, you can see it spins, all the little wheels turn, I just run my thumb over and make sure it turns, but I'm going to re-grease it as well and show you, and what happens is, if you can see right in there, that nipple carries on through here, so when you pump grease in, it actually pumps from the inside out, so you can imagine the two are like this, your grease is going in here, out and around these angled shafts it's got to come up over those so it's coating these all the time so that's the idea or that that sort of chamfer on them there okay what i do is just get a washing up bowl you've got all the bits there in your little milk container so you're not going to lose them you want to clean this out just pop out the seal there there's your main washer and there's the other bearing i'm going to clean these up you see it's a gunky job plenty of old bits of rag 
and then you can use paintbrush and I'll use a bit of white spirit on this just to just to loosen it off. I also use WD-40 as well. Years ago they used to use petrol, do not use petrol and give it a good old clean up with a brush. This is the one I've taken off and the inside of that is absolutely shot and pitted. There's absolutely no way I'm putting bearings. I can feel it with my fingers in there. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it in there. It is truly shocking. And as I'm going to be doing quite a bit of trailing this year, I'm going to replace them. Now, I was doing this just for film, but the salt water's got in there, even though I've been meticulous in re-greasing, flushing down with fresh water, it's still eating away in there. I don't even know if you're ever going to see it in there. It is absolutely shocking. So, after the Chandler's and the trailer man, more money, whatever. But I'll be able to show you with brand new bearings. Oh well, let's go shopping. Okay guys, well I'm still in shock from seeing the internal sleeving on that, uh, on that bearing. I'm going to show you because if you remember earlier on I mentioned that there's a mark here. And I think that's heat build up. I did mention I thought it was heat. I can now see... That black mark is exactly in line with where the heat build-ups come from where it's all pitted. The inside of those sleeves are pitted and it's all corroded away. So watch out for the signs there on the shaft. Shaft smooth, it hasn't hurt that. But do you know what? I'm going to check the other side out, the other wheel, because I've got a very bad feeling. Okay, guys, we've crawled up underneath and I can already see that there is a problem. Right there... You can see the grease coming out the inside of the rubber seal, which I did say was not a good sign as a sign of wear, but obviously with one wheel, I changed both these bearings previously at the same time, and you know, if one's gone, I'm pretty sure the other's gone. This one looks like it might even be worse. And the grease has indeed splattered, you can see it around the rim of the wheel there. So it's got to come off. It looks like I'm up to the uh, up to the eyes in in money and expense now, as you do have with boats, everybody with a boat knows. And let's get out and spend some. It makes us feel better anyway. I'm probably not going to like what I see. Well, you guys are so lucky. You get to see exactly what I was talking about on my own wheel. There is the telltale sign of internal seal leakage with the splatter of grease around the edge. And there again is what I consider to be that, that heat build-up sign there. You see that little blackness? That's got to be heat doing that. So just as well I check these out, and what I've also done, two other tips, if you've got anything of an incline, I've used double axle stands on this because I envisage just taking one wheel off, doing it, and then doing the other side. I've now got the whole entire boat up, so I put it on double axle stands, but it's got to be level. You don't want it rocking backwards on a slope, falling off the jacks. Now to stop that, you can come up the front here and I'll show you what I've done. I've lowered, I've dropped down the jockey wheel to try and make it you know, more centralised with the weight coming more forwards on the axle. And yes, for extra safety, I've hitched it up to the car so it can't roll backwards. Right, I'm back from a shopping expedition and OMG. Brand new ones. Now, I've cleaned the old bit out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, see the difference of those two. Right, but what I did want to show you, just briefly, is I talked about those studs that you could knock out. So you've got this sort of spline, let's say you, you, you have a wheel come off on one of these stub bends, you can, look, tap that right out and it's got sort of little fluted splines on the end of that that locate into splines in there to stop it spinning. So you could buy, if you wanted, four spare studs, get them lined up, tap them in, and there you go, you can replace those if you should lose a wheel, if it should get bent. Now inside there, if I move my hand, get some light, and you can see absolutely the front rims are, are polished smooth, and it's much smoother inside there. But the one I took off inside, you might not be able to see it, but in there is just pitted and rusted beyond belief, just in there. It's, I can feel chunks of it in there. Not good news. So... I'm going to grease this new one up and it's got nice shiny new bearings with it and they generally come with a kit 
and it's got the uh, hubcap as well and of course that rubber seal around there that's brand new so I won't get that grease coming out the inside of the wheel and that could be where I overpack it a little bit but it could also be where it's getting that wear and that's a nice nice smooth one let's get it filled up with grease okay I'm using regular LM grease which is a lithium multi-purpose grease and that's for regular greasing on, you know, just general purpose greasing up to 120 degrees C. Nice and clean. We're going to be putting some of that in there. It's got a hole in the center there so that when you push, it comes out of the center. You can put your grease gun over the top and just push down. You don't get covered in gunk. But I always get covered in gunk, as do most people. And here's a bit of fun. There's one at £3.45. And the next one I buy, you won't be surprised with marinization costs. £6.15p and by the time you read this it'll have gone up again so we're going to pack that with grease both sides and uh, then I'm going to top up with it with the grease and the grease, grease nipple and we'll get it fitted up and you'll see how to pack it out my right, people there's no easy way around this we've got to get it packed out with grease so I push down there squeeze it all out and get a good fistful of it and pack it straight down there in the middle because at the end of the day that's the base where the you want a bulk of grease to seal everything is in that middle and then you can pack any bonus out with using the nipple and the grease gun so I generally start with too much and there is the back one just force loads of grease in amongst that those rollers like that and that one is the back, because you see the base of the studs there, you can see the studs. So that's the inside. I've really capped it in there, and that's going to just fit in there snugly. Just like that. Like that bit of surplus off, which is a bit of a joke really, but a bit of a surplus. I'll soon have too much and too little, I can assure you. There's plenty in that middle there, but I'm going to give it another dollop. More fresh grease around this one. Get in there. I used to do this without gloves, it's frightening really. Get it really pushed in amongst those, those rollers. And in it goes. And then I'm ready for the castle nut, the outside washer and the split pin. Now, while I'm in here, as you can see, there's a lot of rust on the inside of the shaft, the suspension unit. Just knock it off. You might as well do this job while you're there as well because it'll keep. And might save it, make it last a little bit longer. And then I give it a coat of, this is the wrong colour but it's going on anyway, a real good coat of hammerite paint which is very, very hard wearing metal paint. Don't go onto the shaft. Just go around the edge, a good old gunking fill up and that might just keep the salt at bay for a little bit longer. To be honest, you don't ever beat salt water. It'll beat you first. I'm all greased up as the saying goes. That's the inside, gonna slide it over the shaft. Just gently keep those. That's it, I'm gonna pinch that bit. He said I'd put too much on there. I'll whack it on over there. I've hammerited all the inside there. And slide it gently on like that. There's going to be a surplus on the back, I can feel it. Plenty of surplus there. Line the bearings up. And then, washer, castle nut, split pin. Hopefully it all lines up. Now you can take that surplus out, like that, save it. This is all new. Put your castle nut on. And then I only put the split pin on later because you have to allow a bit of play in here. You can't do this up. If you do this up tight, it's going to bind and burnt out straight away. Seizure, nasty, nasty, nasty. So that is just sweet. Okay, the nuts on. Split pin has gone on. But you know what I'm going to do? I can't rock it and tell what that's like, how tight that is without the wheel on. So. I'm going to put the wheel on next, undo these, put the wheel on, 
and then I can be able to rock it and I can show you how much play which you can really only feel you can't really see it that you should have there's always got to be a little bit of movement in there okay when you do line the wheel up just be advised there's a little notch cut out there in the wheel rim and that is just for the grease nipple so you can get that so don't go false in it make sure you line up the grease nipple with a grease nipple hole and then spin on your nuts to pardon the expression right the wheel's spinning I've done the nuts up just chock it at the front give it a bit of a pinch there just to lock it just so you can nip those a little bit I'm going to do them up really tight just enough to I can work out how much play there's going to be on this wheel that's it now then what you should have with this castle nut like this is just that little bit of movement there you might be able to hear it you know what, I don't want to be preaching of the converted here but these tubs with the grease because we're going to grease it with the grease nipple now just to top it off really that's what I want to do just to top it off I know there's loads in there when I top it off unscrew your grease gun and I'm going to get messy doing this if you can see it you can see there's a hole it's a, a plastic plate and a hole that's for putting over the top of your grease gun forcing the grease right up in there breaking it off and screwing it on and you're not supposed to get covered in grease and do you know what happens I get covered in grease but there it is now I just want to show you if I can the final touches the wheels on I've done the hammer right on the wheels you know bits of rust on the rims and everything just if I can just top it off you might be able to see how much I fill it out to pack it with grease so all that remains is for me to just wipe the surplus off and this is purely just for me to stop that little end hubcap coming off and I have had it happen might be where I overpack with grease I'll just do that I know if I'm doing a long run down to 250 miles then I don't have to check that is sealed on there and the grease is inside well that's it that's another edition of totally awesome how to's and that one was quite an epic how to I have to say but I needed doing you can see it needed doing I had to do it myself I do a lot of trailing and I drag it to Ireland that's a thousand miles my goodness am I glad I checked it but it's done now but ask yourself this when was the last time you checked your hubs and bearings on your trailer I strongly suggest having a look it might not be a pretty sight now the only how to I want to know now is how to get out of the pub and have a beer totally awesome cold beer